Blood on the Clock Tower is a social deception game for between 5 and 20 players battled out between the forces of good and evil. A long time ago, in the sleepy village of Ravenswood Bluff, the town storyteller has been murdered by a terrible demon. Will the good people of the town put the puzzle together and execute the true demon in time to save themselves, or will evil overrun this once peaceful village? Some good players have scraps of information. Others have abilities that fight the evil or protect the innocent. But the demon and its evil minions are spreading lies to confuse the good townsfolk and breed suspicion. If you're on the good team, you need to put the pieces of the puzzle together and figure out who to trust. If you're on the evil team, you need to lie about who you are, plant false information, and protect the demon at all costs, even with your life. During a day phase, players socialize openly or whisper privately to trade knowledge or spread lies, culminating in a player's execution if a majority suspects them of being evil. Of a night phase, all players close their eyes and are woken one at a time by the ghostly storyteller to gather information, spread mischief, or kill. Now, if you've played social deception games before, this is nothing new. So we have real people here playing Blood on the Clock Tower today to show you five reasons why it's a bluffing game like no other. I have suddenly changed my mind. In Blood on the Clock Tower, death is not the end. Players stay in the thick of the action to the final execution, even if their characters are killed, haunting Ravenswood Bluff as ghosts trying to win from beyond the grave. Many players can become even more influential after they die, helping to steer the town away from danger or lead them further astray. I was killed by the demon at night, it seems. Okay, well, this was great for me. Now all that's done is just made me look good because the demon's gonna kill good players. I look good. Now this is great because everyone's coming to me telling me who they are and stuff. Uh, I am the Raven's Keeper, so I'm trying to attract the attention of the demon. So the Raven Keeper, if they are killed by the demon at night time, they find out, or they get to pick a person in the game and get to learn who their character is. Eyes open everybody please, and in the morning, Claire! Oh, oh no! Who were you Claire? I was the empath and for two days I got a zero on my neighbours, so that means that Neither of my two neighbours are evil, unless I was poisoned, but I think that's unlikely. I'd have to have been poisoned two nights in a row to get zero on each night. Hey guys! Hey! hey. So, uh, Players can enter a game even after it starts as a powerful traveller character. This means you can turn up late and still be included. Travellers have some of the most powerful and fun abilities in the game. I am the traveller, I'm the bone collector, and I'm the evil bone collector. And my plan is to resurrect the demon because she is the man. Good point, good point. There are over 200 characters across seven planned editions, and none are generic. They are all unique, powerful, and each one knows something. No two players are ever the same character, and no two games are ever alike. We know he's good from the first Yep. Then, that's suggesting you weren't poisoned. And I, I trust Abdullah, he's told me who he is, oh. and I trust that he's definitely good. I uh, have come up to a few people, okay. and I will now come out publicly. I am the fortune teller, so I get to check every night two people. If one of them is the demon, and if I'm not poisoned, that I'm told so. I told, um, I think, three people, and I haven't died this night, so I believe that neither of them is a... Okay, so at the moment I'm the demon, but no one suspects me and it's fantastic. So I'm the undertaker and I was just shown that Julian was the imp. Now maybe we caught him in a bad bluff, but I'm starting to believe that he is the recluse. I am the spy, but I claim to be the fortune teller. As the spy, every night I get to see the whole grimoire. So if I've got a bit of memory, I can remember exactly who's who. Uh, I'm the saint, where just about at the end of the game, there's four people alive and I have no idea who, who it is. Oh, I, I know who, who some people are, but they're the dead people. The only people I need to know the identity of, the living players, uh, completely confuse me. Uh, I, I believe everyone. So the saint's ability is that if you are executed, 
are good losers and you you are good I don't have a plan to get out of this I I think I'm about to die there is a massive amount of information in blood on the clock tower but some of it is deliberate misinformation if a player is made drunk or poisoned they won't know it and the storyteller can make their ability malfunction or lie to them this means you can never be sure whether a player is bluffing to you or just plain wrong. It keeps everyone guessing and keeps each game fresh to the very end. And Maisha and got zero. So Doug, how do you wish to die? Uh, crucifixion. Whoa. Crucifixion. <laughs> yeah. Keep that out of the video. Classic. Doug does die eventually. The team that wins. It's the evil. Baron. Not the monk, not the soldier, but the raven keeper. We have our chef, our drunk. Oh. <laughs> uh, my name is Stephen. I'm the creator of Blood on the Clock Tower. This game here. We have the Grimoire. The Grimoire is the box. Being the storyteller is awesome. Blood on the Clock Tower has the most dynamic moderator role of any bluffing game. The storyteller uses this game board to control the game, to set up and to choose which players. Using the Grimoire and the game's intricate playing pieces, the storyteller decides what characters are in each game, what information to reveal, and how to help, hinder, or mislead each team to craft a nail-biting experience every time. That from the good team. The good team came out and executed the Baron immediately, uh, so evil was definitely on the back foot. However, when a traveler came in, we had a, an evil bone collector, which balanced things out a bit. The bone collector sat on their information, did not use their ability for a very, very long time. The most interesting points in that game, uh, we had a spy that was continually registering as, registering as good, and continually registering as evil. It flipped back and forth. We had an undertaker who was convinced right up until the end that they were in fact the undertaker, but they weren't, they were the drunk. So that whole game, whenever they were learning who was executed that day, I had to make a call on which character to show them. What do I like most about being a storyteller? I like creating chaos. Okay, that was the best game at Clock Tower ever. What I really like about Clock Tower is that it's endlessly replayable. Every game is different. I come planning to stay for an hour, maybe two, and then the next thing I know, it's midnight. One of my favourite things about Blood on the Clock Tower is, that the, is the community that we've created here. Every game is different. Um, it's just a lot of fun. Um, I, it's a game that I can just play all night. That was Blood on the Clock Tower. We've been ruthlessly playtesting and playing this game for nearly four years and we're finally ready to bring it into the world to share it with you. As of early 2018, the game isn't out yet, but there are places you can play right now. Visit bloodontheclocktower.com to see what cities all over the world we're running regular games in. We'd love to see you at one.